So here we have our grasshopper we're going to use for our dissection. Uh, we've already removed one of the legs just to make it easier for you to see. Uh, but we're going to start by looking at the different exterior features of this uh, grasshopper we have here. Uh, so first we want to see the different body segments. So on the back we have the abdomen. In the middle if you see we can bend them a little bit and you can kind of see that middle section a little better. We have the thorax. Uh, that's the section where all the legs and the wings are attached to. And then up top we have this uh, head segment you can see uh, on our image here. Uh, looking at your insect uh, or this grasshopper here, uh, we're going to start by just looking at its head. Uh, its head's got some different features. Uh, you can clearly see the antennas up here in the top. Uh, then we have, if we point them out to you, we can see these eyes down here. Uh, the compound eyes are the big, huge eyes you're used to seeing. Uh, if we examine it a little more closely, uh, you can see in the middle between those eyes there's these three markings, and those are the simple uh, auxiliary eyes. Uh, so we have those three markings uh, between those compound eyes. So we got the antennas, the compound eyes, and the auxiliary. Uh, then we come down to the mouth. Uh, the mouth has some key features we can identify as well. Uh, so I may just remove another leg just to make it easier for us to see. I'm um, just going to try to move it out of our way. Uh, but next to the mouth we have some key features. We have the mandibles uh, which are used for chewing. Uh, behind the mandible are the maxillae. Uh, those are used as like a compound jaw. Uh, you can see his mouth opens up much more widely than say like a human's mouth. Uh, so we have two sets of jaws here and that helps him with the eating. And then we have these labrum, uh, these kind of tentacle looking pieces. Uh, and that's again used to help gather the food and bring it into the mouth. Uh, so those are some key features we're looking for on the head. Those uh, antenna, compound eye, auxiliary eyes, uh, the mandibles, and maxillary, and of course uh, the key features of our chewing and then your labrum to help. So that's some features of that head or mouth there. Uh, next we'll move on to our uh, abdomen, or we'll move down one piece at a time. So we'll look at the thorax next. Uh, we have two sets of wings. Uh, the first one's a very le leather, uh, harder, more hardened type protective wing. Uh, so we have two sets. We have this protective one, and then behind it we have a softer, uh, more what you'd consider a stereotypical insect wing. Uh, so it's got some membrane to it, and we got some wing to it. Uh, so that gives us our uh, two wings. Uh, you can also see our legs coming off of that thorax section. We have the walking legs in the front, and our jumping legs in the back. You can see that jumping leg, it's a lot meatier than those walking legs. It gives it more power, more muscles. It helps it to jump a lot more easily. So we got those two different types of, of legs. We got those walking legs, and then we got the jumping legs. The jumping legs, obviously, is what gives it that power to jump. You can also see that clear uh, herringbone pattern on that hind jumping leg and some people use that to help identify uh, grasshopper from other insects like uh, cricket or similar looking organisms. Uh, next I'm going to remove the wings. So I'll pause the video so you don't have to watch me remove these wings uh, and we'll come back and we'll look at that abdominal section. Uh, on the abdominal section we can already see some other spiracles. Uh, they may be hard to see in this video because they're really small holes on the side of the abdomen section, uh, but we have those. So I'm going to remove those wings and we'll come back and look at some parts of the abdomen. So now when we look underneath these wings, I'm going to try to get in as close as we can. Uh, when we remove these wings, we got one wing and then we got a smaller, less developed wing behind it. Uh, you can kind of see, hopefully, that tympanic membrane. Uh, that's the hearing drum. Uh, you can see that membrane back here on the first segment uh, behind those wings. Uh, that's what we're looking at for uh, this next section that's called a tympanic membrane. It's used for hearing. Uh, it helps the grasshopper to be able to hear what's going on around it, uh, what the sounds around and what's going on. Uh, so that's used for hearing that tympanic membrane. Uh, so that's a key feature we want to see. It's a lot different than what we see on humans, uh, but it's located back behind one wing, two wings, and then you have your tympanic membrane on that first segment 
of the abdominal segment of your grasshopper. Along with uh, that tympanic membrane, uh, we can identify whether it's a male or female by looking here on the back end of our grasshopper uh, by, based on the position of that abdomen. If it turns downward, it nails as we go. So if it gets narrow and then goes downward, that's going to be a female. It's going to got what's called an ovo positioner at the end. If it goes upwards at the end, if it tilts upwards, if we have a big upwards motion and we don't have a nail tube at the end, uh, that would be a male. So in this case, we're looking at the way it comes back and nails it down at the end. Uh, that should help you identify the sex of this uh, grasshopper. Uh, next, we'll examine our leg. So I'm going to take a leg off. I'll pause it and we'll come back and look at that leg. So on this leg, uh, we have some different parts to it. Uh, I'm going to use my forceps to hold it so it's a little easier for you to see. Uh, but we have, if I'm holding it, the part that I'm grabbing it by is the upper portion. It's called the femur. Uh, above that, the next segment, segment down, we have is your tibia. So we have your tibia, your femur, and then above it, where it attaches, we're looking at what's called a, a coxa. So we have a coxa, a femur, and then a tibia. So some of those bones, uh, if you're used to the names of human bones, uh, where I'm grabbing it's the femur. That's the in humans, that's the largest, uh, strongest bone we have in our body. Uh, so it's got some similarities there. Uh, we got the coxa and then tibia. We also have a tibia in our body. Uh, again, those are bones in our body. Uh, these insects don't have those bones. They have an exoskeleton instead. Uh, but you can see those similarities in it, even an insect. But you can see it's got multiple segments. There's more than just two segments. We have additional segments down below uh, past that tibia in this uh, grasshopper. So that's our leg. Uh, next, we'll move on and look at some uh, interior segments of this grass. Uh, just real quick to review before we move on to the interior, uh, we got our head segment uh, with the antennas, uh, with the compound eyes, the axillae, uh, your mandibles, your maxillae, and then your labrum. Uh, in the middle, we have our thorax. Uh, it's where the wings are found. It's where these different legs are found. We've already removed some of those legs. Uh, we have our uh, walking legs, the smaller legs that we look, just looked at. We have our walking legs. Uh, and then we also have our larger uh, jumping legs. You should, obviously, for jumping, uh, it's got much more muscle in it. Uh, then we come back up to our uh, grasshopper. At the end of that section we looked underneath the wings and we saw the tympanic membrane uh, down beneath the wings behind the wings on the first segment uh, then we have the abdomen it's where it's got holes on the side we call spiracles uh, helps that organism to be able to breathe and then we look at the back end to identify the sex uh, seeing if it's got that upper positioner uh, the egg laying uh, organelle or, or organ found in female versions of grasshopper uh, so that's some of the segments we looked at on the exterior. Uh, next, we're going to cut them open and look at the inside. So we'll come back once we got them cut open and uh, let you see what's going on inside this grasshopper. Uh, so we've cut away a little bit on the abdomen. Uh, now we're going to open up a little bit so you can kind of see what's inside. Uh, we haven't done so so that we're all the way inside, which is on the outer surface. Uh, we got some muscle here we can see. And then we also have these uh, small uh, tube-like structures. You can kind of see them in here, uh, the small tube-like structures. Hopefully you can see them uh, with the lighting we have here. Uh, the small tube-like structures are what's called uh, trachea. They go from the spiracles, those holes we saw on the outside, uh, further into the body of uh, this grasshopper. So you can kind of see some of them. Uh, they're similar to our muscles. Uh, we tried to pull back some of the muscles so you can hopefully see that. Uh, this portion here, we got some muscle, uh, but you can see some of those small uh, trachea coming in from the spiracles on the outside of the abdomen. Uh, the next move we're going to make is up on the head. We're going to cut open on this left side of the head uh, down to its mouth and see what we can see up in its head. So we'll uh, pause and come back and hopefully you'll be able to see what's inside there. 
Uh, so we have the head here, we got it split open, and we're kind of take a real quick look inside. So I got the head, uh, we got this exoskeleton, and we'll kind of split it so you can kind of see what's inside. Hopefully uh, you can get a good view on it. Uh, I'll just pull, try to pull it back so you can see what's in there. It's not the easiest structure to see, uh, but you can kind of see if I grab my forceps, uh, my pro, uh, you can kind of see uh, it's got this little... Uh, dorsal ganglion in here. Uh, that's what we know as the brain for the grasshopper. Uh, obviously a small head, it's not going to have a huge brain inside it, uh, but it does have that processing device. So it does have that processing device right there if you look in closely. Uh, so that's the dorsal ganglion or, or the brain inside there. Uh, so inside the head, obviously we have the dorsal ganglion, and if we come down underneath we have the mouth, uh, which is the beginning of our digestion process. Uh, so next we'll move on and look at the abdomen a little more, at the digestive system. So we'll pull back some of those uh, muscles we saw earlier in the abdomen and see what's back behind those. Uh, so we'll catch you in a few. So if we look now, we got this uh, left side uh, kind of peered back. I uh, got it pinned to the dissection pane and we want to uh, try to take some of these muscles out. So we got some muscle here along the side. We want to try to take that out so we can see that digested tract a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to try to pull it out while you guys are watching uh, so we can kind of see what's going on there. So I'm pulling that muscle out and that's just so we can better see that digestive tract. Uh, the digestive tract's an elementary canal. It comes all the way down from the mouth. You can kind of see I'm around it. I don't want to rip it out. There's still some muscle around it back here. Uh, but I don't want to rip it all out and have you not see it. Uh, but we have that canal going back and you can see it's connected all the way from the front. If I uh, pull out a little bit, you can see how it's connected from the front. We have our organs in there and then it comes all the way to the back of the abdomen. Uh, so I went in to cell clean some of those muscles out. I'll try to get a little more cleared out uh, and we'll look in and see what we can see inside. Uh, we'll catch you in a few. So now we got a little more cleared out. Uh, we're looking up here. I've removed the head to make it a little easier for you to see up here. Uh, we got the crop. So the crops at the beginning where uh, we have some food storage taking place up there. Uh, then we come into a gizzard. Uh, gizzard, uh, if you've eaten turkey gizzard, uh, you may be familiar with it. So we got some gizzard. Uh, right behind the gizzard we have our stomach. On top of it we have some, some glands. Uh, these glands are used to secrete uh, different enzymes into the stomach uh, called gastric cilia. Uh, but they're on top of the stomach there, so the stomach's right there underneath. Uh, hopefully you get a good view of it there. Uh, but we have our gastric cilia above and then the stomach underneath. Uh, from there we go to our midgut. Uh, the midgut is going to be where some absorption is going to start taking place. We've digested, we've broken down the food. And uh, now we're going to have some uh, absorption of those nutrients starting to take place. The farther back we go, the more nutrients we have take place. In uh, this case, I did end up breaking off in between those uh, where we get to the intestines here in the back. Uh, but you can still see where those intestines run down all the way to the length of the body. Uh, so we have a crop, a gizzard, a stomach, uh, different uh, intestines leading to the rectum that's going to release waste out the anus, out the back of this organism. Uh, so those are some key parts of the stomach we're looking for. So we start up in the esophagus is what's bringing the food down. You can see this guy, he's actually got some food in his, uh, coming down into his stomach, into the crop right there. Uh, the esophagus is what comes straight from the mouth. So we go from the mouth to the esophagus.